Hey Fanatics, Dave here with another video tutorial from LightroomFanatic.com. A while ago I did a tutorial for uh, HDR photography using Lightroom and Photomatics and in that tutorial uh, I made a mistake and recommended um, a color space that uh, was not the ideal one to use with Photomatics. So I wanted to do a quick follow-up um, using some information that HDR Soft, the company that makes Photomatics, had sent me. So uh, we'll run through the tutorial one more time. Uh, again, same as last time, I've got three images. Uh, taken of the same scene, uh, one average exposure, one underexposed, and one overexposed. And you can see I've got them selected down here. And what I'm going to do is send them over to Photomatics using the plugin that gets uh, that you can install with Photomatics Pro. So I'm going to use the shortcut Shift Command E, and you can see my export dialog comes up here, and I've got three files selected. I'm going to click on the Photomatics Pro uh, plugin export. Uh, and what I had said before was to change the color space to Pro Photo RGB since that's what Lightroom uses. Uh, but Lightroom actually uses a slightly different variation of Pro Photo uh, RGB called Melissa. Um, and HDR Soft said that in order to get the best results, just leave the color space as uh, Adobe RGB um, when you send the images over to Photomatic. So that's what we're going to do now. And I'm going to click on Export. And this is the same Photomatics Pro dialog. Uh, align the images. Uh, I handheld the images uh, that I took here, so I found that by using the matching features option, I was getting better results. But uh, depending on the type of, uh, depending on your situation, uh, one of these may work better than the other. So, but for mine, again, uh, matching features work the best. Uh, I'm going to re-import uh, my final image back into Lightroom, and I'm going to use the HDR suffix so I know which file I'm looking at. Uh, and then everything else, I'm just ready to go. So I'm going to click on export, and you can see the three images are being prepared and shipped over to Photomatics. Uh, when I initially started to re-record this tutorial, um, I had forgotten that I actually tweaked one of the images, uh, one of these three images, and I was getting an error dialog or an information dialog in Photomatics that said that one of the images was a different size. So I went back and looked, and the had rotated the image a little bit, which trimmed the uh, trimmed it by a few pixels. So uh, before I went and did uh, recorded this tutorial, I went ahead and reset all of the images. So just something to keep in mind. If you import a lot of images and you have your HDR images intermixed with other ones and maybe you're applying a preset and you import the images, that will affect the final outcome. So uh, just something to keep in mind, just be informed. So here we are again inside of uh, Photomatics and I'm just going to go ahead uh, again if you've watched the last tutorial, we kind of went through a couple of these, but I'm just going to select one of the presets that I like for uh, that Photomatics makes available. And uh, this one is actually, uh, I like it. It's got a nice little um, blend of the three different composures, and then we'll go back into Lightroom and do uh, a little bit more tweaking to it. Um, but again, that was the, the process of getting basically from Lightroom to Photomatics. Um, definitely read the uh, the documentation for Photomatics because there's a lot of options and you can do a lot of different things to uh, to get that look that you want. Um, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to use one of the presets that they've defined. So uh, I'm all done and I'm going to click on save and re-import. And Photomatics is going to do its thing and then we'll wind up back inside of Lightroom with a new image at the very end here. That is the output from Photomatics. You can see the file name has HDR in it. And then what I would do is tweak it any way that I wanted to for the type of look that I was going for. And that would be it. So again, uh, leave the default color space when you export from Lightroom over to Photomatics uh, to get the best results. And I hope this helps. And for more, check us out over at LightroomFanatic.com.